It doesn't happen very often to stumble upon a product that has a huge impact on the way we work. For several years, I struggled with noise in footage, especially videos made with drones, and also with flicker in time lapses. I had tried several fixes, but never really find a solution. Then I tried neat video, and instantly noise and flicker became a thing of the past. It is probably the best $100 I ever spent for my video and photo workflow. In this video, I will show in the easiest possible way how using Nick Video you can get rid of luminosity noise, chromatic noise, and flicker in video time lapses and even photos. At the end, I will also show you how to fix local flicker due to the propellers of a drone. If you're interested in drone, video, photography, or time lapses, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Neat Video is available as a plugin for most video editors like Premiere Pro, After Effects, Final Cut, DaVinci Resolve, Vegas, and so on. The price varies from one version to another, and it is more or less in the range between 50 and 100 euros, more or less the same in dollars. The much improved version 5 has been released in 2019, and has a host of functions. It is even possible to purchase third-party profiles for some specific situation. But I will show you some extremely easy workflows for the most common situations that works for me practically on all occasions. Luminance noise is what is often referred to as grain. Small dots darker or brighter than the surrounding areas. This footage was shot with a drone released a few years ago. Drones are much more prone to noise compared to regular camera, and that is not surprising considering the small sensor and the basic build of the lenses. The latest generation of DJI drones has improved a lot, but the previous one were noise machines. As you can see, this clip has tons of noise everywhere, apparently mostly luminance noise. Notice also that the trees are a bit mushy, lacking detail. This was another issue with previous generations of drones. I have to color grade this clip to be consistent with the color scheme of a specific project. You can see that after color grading, things are even worse. A disaster. In this example, I'm using After Effects. But Neat Video works practically in the same way in all other programs. I add a new adjustment layer and in FX I choose Neat Video. In the top left corner we can read Profile Not Ready, so I hit Prepare. We now have this window with three smaller ones at the bottom, analyzing the three main components of noise. Luminance noise, chrominance noise on the magenta purple, and chrominance on the blue cyan. If I move around with the mouse, we can control the amount of noise in the different parts of the image. Now I choose a portion of the image where I think there is a high amount of noise. The area should be as uniform in color as possible, and in most cases we have plenty of noise in the dark parts. These trees should be fine for our purposes, so I draw a box, possibly quite big, until the rectangle becomes green. If you cannot identify an area big enough, it will still work fine, although with a bigger size we get a more precise reading. We can see that the noise level in the area is around 10, which is a lot. If we move to this other area of trees, the noise is even worse. In general, when applying denoising in most programs, there is a trade-off between reducing noise and losing detail. 
we have to compromise and accept a softer image in exchange for the reduction of noise. This is not the case with neat video, as it generally gets rid at very high levels of noise without any loss of detail. But in my experience it is better to avoid choosing an area with a noise value much higher than 10 in order to maintain detail, so we choose the previous area. I hit the button Build Profile on the top left. On the right we have a window showing plenty of interesting values about the noise components and with plenty of functions available. As I mentioned before, in this video there are gazillions of ways to get rid of noise, but my extremely simple method will work in almost any situations. I now hit Profile Check to analyze the effect on the different areas. If I drag the rectangle to a specific area, I can see how the noise was before. If I release the mouse button, I can see how it is after the noising. The luminant noise in the window on the bottom left is completely gone when I release the mouse. There is maybe a risk of a tiny bit of softness, in which case I will reduce the amount of luminance noise adjustment. On the other two windows we can see that there is still a good amount of chrominant noise, both in the magenta and the cyan channels. Now I hit this button Adjust and Preview at the top. We have a window filter settings on the right with three tabs, temporal, spatial and general. In quality mode I increased the radius to 3 for a more detailed analysis of noise. If we open temporal noise we can check the level by clicking on the button begin. The image turns blue with some white spot only in the sky. We want to have all the non-moving areas solid blue which is the case here. So we take no action and we can click on finish. Then we can check for local flicker, localize difference in luminosity in part of the frame. You can see that we have plenty of spots all over the image, but by moving the slider local flicker to the right to a value of 15, the spots have gone. We can now hit finish. Jitter of detail is like some hot area dancing around the fine details due to compression in the file. Since we have plenty of trees in the scene, we can increase the threshold a bit. We have now finished with the temporal tab, so we move to the spatial one. Here we deal mostly with chrominance noise. In the profile check we saw that we had a good level of noise in both channels, so I increase both sliders to 90. There are plenty other sliders for fine tuning, but I find that this simple adjustment is in most cases all we need. Finally I tick the box for sharpening. I'm always wary about sharpening tools as they tend to introduce artifacts, but sharpening in it video always work extremely well. We can now click on Apply and check the result. As you can see the image before was a total disaster, absolutely unusable. After this video the noise has completely disappeared and it looks really nice now. The detail in the houses is excellent. In the tree is just decent, certainly as good as it was before the noising. If we want to try to get a bit of extra detail in the trees, we could go back and lower the noise reduction settings. But I'm happy with this clip. If we analyze before and after, the difference is hard to believe. Let's move to a totally different scene. We are in the east coast of Sicily in summer, in the middle of a very hot and hazy day. I avoid shooting under this kind of conditions, as the light is simply horrible, with no contrast whatsoever. I could hardly see the difference between the sea and the sky. I never shoot footage in summer in southern Europe, and even less in the middle of the day. 
It is the time when videographers are supposed to sleep. But I had to do this video, so I had to try to get something acceptable out of it. After a good dose of post-processing, this is how the footage looks like. Disaster. Not only a huge amount of noise everywhere, but you can also notice big blobs of chromatic noise in the sea and in the road. Before meeting Nit video, this clip would have gone directly to the bin. So I open a layer on After Effects, I load Nit video and hit Prepare. I choose a rectangle in the lower part of the sea, and the reading is around 11, which indicates a huge amount of noise. I hit Build Profile and then Profile Check. If I inspect the image, the luminance noise seems to have disappeared everywhere in the image. But it seems that a bit of, of chromatic noise is still there. This time I want to check what happens if I simply accept the automatic profile created, without any extra settings. So I hit Apply, and this is the result. The noise has totally disappeared around the road in the bush near the castle. The detail is now excellent. But if we look hard, there is maybe still a hint of noise in the sea. So we go back to Neat Video and see what we can do. I click on the button Adjust. In the Temporal tab, I set the radius to 3, and I can see that there is a bit of temporal noise. So I push the slider to 45% and it is gone. I check the local jitter, there is hardly any, I get rid of it at about 8. Then I check Adapt to Changing Noise. I move to the Special tab. Since the noise was mostly chrominance, I increase the sliders for the magenta and for the cyan channel to 90%. I check the box for sharpening and I can hit apply. If we analyze the clip, I have the impression that the noise in the sea has totally disappeared. As usual, Neat Video has rescued a totally unusable clip. Flicker is a very frequent issue in time lapses and hyperlapses, depending on the type of lenses used in a camera or a drone. These days, with my Nikon D850 and the new generation of drones, I hardly ever get any flicker at all. This hyperlapse was taken in Brighton with a drone from 6-7 years ago, and you can see the huge flashes of light. Wow, the movement of cars and people is so jittery. I didn't even have any ND filter for that drone at the time. So let's call Neat Video to the rescue. As usual, I build a profile and go to Adjust and Preview. In the case of Flickr, we are only concerned with the Temporal tab. We set the radius to 3 and we check the temporal noise. We can see that there is quite a lot, so I push the slider to the right until it is mostly gone. Then I check the local filter and I set the slider to around 15. The magic slider for flicker is the next one, frame flicker. But for the moment we leave it alone, just to check if the adjustment we made so far have done any good. So I check adapt to changing noise and hit apply. As you can see, most of the flicker is already gone, but there are still a few minor flashes of light. Time to use our magic slider. So we got back to neat video, and this time we crank all the way up the frame flicker slider. And as you can see, the flicker is totally gone now. In this time lapse of Mount Etna, 
having one of these frequent shows, we have an issue that can happen at times with drones. The shadow from the propellers is clearly evident on the left part of the image, causing a sort of flicker. The clip needs stabilizing badly, but it is better to get rid of this flicker before. I start with the same workflow as in the previous image. I get rid of temporal noise, of local flicker, and then crank the frame filter all the way to the right. I also check adapt to changing noise. We can see that the shadows from the props are now mostly gone, but we can still notice a bit of flicker on the left edge of the scene. So we can try to apply another instance of the noising. We go exactly through the same routine. And at the end the propellers have disappeared. Excellent software, I really recommend it. The only denoiser that can close is the one supplied with DaVinci Resolve Studio, the premium version. If you're interested in drones, videography or photography, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Bye for now.